These are the programming languages that have the features that are associated with dynamic programming. This includes executing code which changes on the fly or code that we don't know what the code is going to be before the code runs. Now the use of dynamic programming techniques kind of exists in this gray area and there's a lot of different opinions about how you should use it and all those other kinds of things. But if you take a look at this list, you can see just how many languages support using dynamic features like the eval function, which is very, very common among these. Welcome to this series that I'll be doing on dynamic programming techniques like eval using Python and Visual Basic. I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we are going to be starting a series and we're gonna be talking about dynamic programming. Now, dynamic programming is a really big topic and it has lots of opinions about it. And I mentioned it briefly in my previous episode where I talked about the a uh, function called eval in Visual Basic for applications for Microsoft Access. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that the eval function or some equivalent is actually available in a very large number of languages, and there's a very special reason why. And the reason for that is that some projects have programming components that go beyond the complexity of what is sort of practical for a normal programming environment. Basically, what that means is it's just not easy to program what we need to program because the number of steps are too big or there's too many conditions and those kind of things. And it makes a lot more sense to store our steps and conditions and things in tables instead. Survey systems that you know might have a whole bunch of branches and jump points and things like that. And these are things that you just would not want to program in code, uh, hard coded, um, because it just doesn't make any sense since you might want to have non-technical users change you know a survey or something like that and be able to choose what questions and things are in are in there and where those questions jump to and it just doesn't fit into normal if then you know select case or whatever logic that you might do when you're programming in the code editor and of course one key feature of all of this is that you can extend it to those non-technical users and if you make you know a program basically that does this allows them access to these tables uh, they can generate all kinds of you know logic flow and things like that using friendly names that you might put you know uh, you know attached to each condition or each function and so over the next episodes that we are going to be doing we're going to be working on a project where we're going to examine a basically a survey training workflow system that's very generic that you could uh, design and you could add your own uh, steps into it and have all kinds of conditions and things like that. We're going to design it in two programming languages. We're going to be using uh, Python and Microsoft Access with Visual Basic for Applications. Those are two examples of dynamic programming languages that I mentioned at the start of this video. And so to get us started, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the very basic logic elements that we're going to use in this framework. Let's get to it. Interested in more cool topics like these? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, so as I mentioned before, many of those languages do have a function or some kind of functionality uh, like the eval function. Now that is really cool and everything, but be advised that if you do not implement eval properly or the techniques in dynamic programming, then your project can be susceptible to code injection. However, I can definitely tell you that most of the people that have used eval or used dynamic programming uh, for some non-trivial task have definitely found it to be very, very powerful. And most people that have used it successfully definitely characterize this feature as being one that you don't know you need until you've done a project where you need it. Most of you at this point are probably asking yourself the question, why? And the answer really has to do with the fact that many, many programming problems don't fit with the strict sort of program flow uh, directly on a problem as opposed to indirectly on a problem where you create some kind of framework in order to handle the problem. Good examples of this include survey systems with all kinds of skip patterns, 
as well as uh, staff training systems that are dependent on all kinds of contexts and, and things that, that are happening on screen on a data entry form at any given moment. What most of us tend to do is we tend to sit down at our computers and we start writing out a whole bunch of logic furiously or we look at some you know, uh, specification for a survey or for some training or for a workflow mechanism that has all kinds of uh, you know, decisions and jump points and skip patterns and all those kinds of things in it and we go, we can program this in our programming language of choice. However, we quickly find out that it just isn't practical to program these things directly into a programming language and, and a framework is much better suited for this kind of thing. The sheer volume and complexity of the detail just outstrips our ability to program this in a programming language with natural program flow like if-then statements or loops and those kinds of things. So what if we could break down our problem from one big block of decision making into a whole bunch of smaller blocks of decision making and then have those blocks flow into each other until the entire process was completed or we reached some end condition or something like that. So you might be wondering, well, if I take the logic or the actual conditions out of each of the steps of my programming, where does that uh, data go? And the answer is that it goes into tables. And we can create a set of tables that will have all of the uh, evaluation conditions and all of those kinds of things uh, so that when we run a particular step in our process, it will get the expression from a table and then you guessed it, the only way to evaluate that expression or condition is to use the eval function. And not only can we evaluate expressions with it, but we can also execute functions, and functions can do a lot of things. And so you might be thinking, well, if these can flow into each other and they can also evaluate conditions, well, they can also have different branches, which is exactly the case. Once you have released the power of dynamic programming, you can indeed have any kind of pattern with unlimited steps that you can apply to any situation, whether that be a survey or a training module that uses context or even a workflow framework using eval and some dynamic programming is going to definitely power up your application. And on top of that, we're going to have the ability to also do things like dynamically prompt the user for input at each of our steps if we need to, and also optionally execute different actions or batches or any kind of programming that you'd like to see uh, dependent on prompts that users answered or uh, return values from expressions about things like values on an on-screen form or something like that. And of course longer term, because all of our expressions and function calls and all of those things will be stored in tables uh, with friendly names, that means that we can also extend the creation of the logic to our super users or our senior staff to facilitate knowledge harvesting. As you can see, you can have an unlimited number of sequences, just like the one that you see in front of you here, uh, applied to an unlim unlimited number of cases. Uh, the only constraint on that being the size of the database on which you are able to store things. So you can encapsulate and store a huge amount of knowledge about your particular domain inside of the database and you can apply that to training users or collecting survey information or anything along those lines. Now you might be wondering, well, what are we going to program? And the answer is we're going to program a framework, but the framework is going to be broken down into very small nodes. And each of those nodes is going to evaluate a condition. It's going to get a prompt from the user, and then it's going to run some actions based on whatever happens inside of that node at that moment. And so this is the way that I programmed it. There are a million ways that you could design something similar, uh, but this one definitely suited my needs for doing surveys and, and staff training 
type of environments. Have you ever run into a situation that was very complex or that you couldn't find a solution for while developing your database application? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you're notified of new episodes by clicking the subscribe button and click the bell beside it so you're notified when there's new content. Need to manage your projects and have your staff put in their time out in the field anywhere where there's an internet connection? Make sure to check out my time entry system. The link is in the description.